now they used these radioactive viruses to infect a bacteria called E. coli and I have an incredible image, at least it blows my mind below here, in fact two images. This is an actual TEM, that is a transmission electron micrograph image of T2 viruses on an E. coli bacteria. I bet Hershey and Chase would have killed to see this view. It's basically taken with an electron microscope, a transmission electron microscope, and it has been artificially colored, but it's showing how these viruses attach to the cell surface and inject their DNA, shown in blue, into the cell. As you can see here, the DNA comes out of the capsid and it enters the cell along this part called the shaft. Once it's inside, it's packed in these things called vesicles and the cell is instructed through this uh, virus's DNA to produce more of the virus, more and more and more, until the cell bursts. So although they couldn't see it at the time, it was known that the viruses work in such a manner and after they have injected their DNA what's left is just your capsid or protein coat and the DNA is inside the cell. One question I had when I was just reading about this was how exactly does this DNA enter the cell? You know, does it go in by diffusion or is there some sort of protein that is actively pushing it in? And I couldn't really find an answer so Maybe just a curiosity question to throw at you. Uh, if you find an answer, please, please let me know in the comments. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, sorry. So finally coming to the experiment that Hershey and Chase did, they took half of their E. coli, infected it with the sulfur containing virus and half with the phosphorus, um, sorry, not sulfur containing because all of them will contain sulfur in their protein coat with the sulfur isotope containing virus and then half with the phosphorus um, isotope containing virus and then the mixture of that was produced of bacteria and viruses was run in a literal blender which is why this experiment is famously known as the blender experiment in biology and after being run for a couple of minutes the blended mixture was put in a centrifuge running at approximately 10 thousand rpm faster than a car's engine and this mixture after running uh, for so long when they came back probably from their lunch breaks the mixture in the test tubes had separated into a dense part called the pellet and a fluid less dense section called the supernatant supernatant sounds interesting kind of like a superhero um, and I actually pulled the original table from the paper. This table basically shows how much of the isotope they found inside the supernatant of the uh, two solutions. That is, for the sulfur and phosphorus mixtures, how much of the isotope ended up in the supernatant and how much ended up in the pellet. We'll focus on the last two rows due to uh, the effect being clearer there as they have a higher multiplicity of infection. When the mixture was not run in the blender at all, it was run for zero minutes, then uh, it was straight up centrifuged and we found that 13% of the phosphorus ended up in the supernatant, whereas 46%, almost half of the sulfur ended up in its supernatant. Recalling the way in which bacteria infect, sorry, viruses infect bacteria, we see that the DNA enters the bacterium and is protected by a cell membrane as well as a cell wall. If it is true that DNA is the genetic material of the cells, then this DNA which entered would contain the phosphorus isotope and hence the phosphorus isotope would be protected rather than the protein coats containing the sulfur which would be easily detached when 
placed in, let's say, a centrifuge under the extreme forces. So we'd expect that the more dense cells would settle in the pellet and hence we would find more phosphorus in the pellet if DNA is the genetic material whereas sulfur would be released in the protein coats and would be fi found in the supernatant. More of it could be found in the supernatant as it can easily detach via the protein coats. And this is exactly what they found especially in after running it in a blender for two and a half minutes because that caused even more of the protein coats to detach due to the forces and we found that around 82% of the sulfur was uh, present at radioactivity wise in the supernatant whereas only 24% of the phosphorus was there in the supernatant around 75% of it being in the pellets. This was the evidence that they needed to prove that DNA is the genetic material of the cell. To verify this, they also conducted a trial in which instead of using complete bacteria, they used bacterial debris, so just pieces of the cell wall and cell membrane floating around. And this time when they infected it with the uh, phage or the bacteriophage, then because the DNA was still injected as the bacteriophage didn't know that there was no cell beyond the cell membrane. So it still infected the cell with the DNA but on the other end there was nothing to protect the DNA so it was just freely floating. And hence this time when the mixture was centrifuged it was found that 55% of the sediment or pellet contained phosphorus, only 55% and 45% of it was in the supernatant. So around half of it entered the less dense part and half of it entered the more dense part, indicating that the earlier difference in phosphorus in the supernatant and pellet was because it was in fact in the DNA and the DNA was in fact protected by the cells which no longer existed. But the main experiment that they did and that you probably need to know is this one over here. So to summarize it, when they infected bacteria with the protein coats being radio labeled using sulfur then the radioactivity was found in the supernatant the fluid on top indicating that the protein coats were the ones containing sulfur and were being detached from the cells whereas when they infected the dna with uh, sorry when they radio labeled the dna with phosphorus then it was found that the radioactivity was in the pellet at the bottom indicating that it the phosphorus was majorly present with the cells inside the pellet, disproportionately present with the cells in the pellet, and hence the DNA was also present within the cells, storing the genetic information and being transferred from the virus to the cell. So I hope, I know that was a bit of a complicated experiment, but I hope that it made sense, and I hope that you can now appreciate this meme thank you so much as always for watching and if you have any questions at all i'd be so so happy to answer them in the comment section and thank you i hope you have a great day goodbye